Every year at General Conference, when the prophet announces a list of temples and Austria doesn't make the list, I, in the past, have sent out a message, well, I guess they're not paying their tithing. When I was serving as a missionary in Austria in the Salzburg Stake Q&A for the priesthood leadership session, where I was acting uh, as a missionary as a translator for the meeting, one of the members asked Elder Cook, who was the visiting general authority, when they were going to build a temple in Austria. Actually, yes, that was in Vienna. And uh, Elder Cook said, when you start paying your tithing, next question, end quote. I... I am shocked and amazed, but excited at the same time to hear President Nelson announce a temple in Austria. Served mission there. I closed a lot of areas there. I have always wondered what happened to the people I knew. I remember the Salzburg stake president who was not sure about what was going to happen to the growth of the church and the future of the church in that country because of the hard-heartedness and closed-mindedness of the people. And I remember very vividly leaving places many times and asking God, please don't let me be the last person who comes to speak to these people. I have no idea why they decided to build one there. Of all the places on the earth, it's not one that would have made my short list, except for this part. Elder Nelson said, we are building for the future. And I do not know exactly what that future will bring. A year ago, when he warned us that April 2020 conference would be unlike any other, we expected something, some great manifestation from heaven. And instead, it was the first virtual conf general conference we'd ever had, where we were not allowed to gather. And of course, we're still not allowed to gather now. But at some point, I have wondered, will we be allowed to return to the temple? And it is interesting to me to see them decide to build one in Austria. That place is a place that is near and dear to my heart. I was grateful for the chance at the end of 2019 to return for the first time since I came back from my mission. And... Uh, walk some of the same streets and stand in some of the same places that I did as a missionary. It says I had never planned to return. And for the first time in my life, now the second time in my life, I'm planning to visit a country, to visit the house of the Lord that will be built there. I know it's a few years away before the temple in, in Vienna will be done. I'm curious to find out where they're going to put it, <laughs> having spent some amount of time there, but not very long in the city, um, to go back to those places. It's a good reason to go back there, a holy reason, a lofty reason, and it will be a blessing for those people. <laughs> whether they want it or not, whether they realize it or not, um, it will be a blessing in that nation. I have great hope that this also portends a future of growth of the church there, particularly for Austrians to repent and be baptized and align their lives more with the principles of the gospel, to choose a better way and to rise above the wicked traditions of their father, the weaknesses of the flesh, and the laziness with which we're all beset from time to time. To see a beautiful house of the Lord built in a country that I love. And a people that mean something to me, even though what they're mostly remembered for are things done by a few of their less venerable ancestors. This is not the kind of uh, celebration and elation I expected for Easter Sunday, but for me it is a renewal of life and a renewal of hope for that nation, for the Austrian people, for those of us who tried and worked our keisters off to preach, teach, expound, exhort, baptize, and invite all to come to Christ. Maybe, just maybe, one day, even if it's way longer than we thought it would take, there will be a great body of believers 
a great enough body of believers in that nation to fill that temple with worshipers, celebrate the Savior, and move forward his work to save souls wherever they are, whenever they lived, and whatever they might have done. Because I know that the atonement of Jesus Christ is for everyone, not just for those I know and like. It is for people who have abused us and persecuted us. It is for people who have made mistakes, because after all, are we not all beggars? Do we all, don't we all need a savior? Don't we all need Christ? So I celebrate with shock and awe. I'm glad I got my rest and took my vitamins. I'm grateful for the great people of that country that I knew and among whom I was able to serve. Godspeed the right. Happy Easter. <laughs>